Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part two of the $500 Pentium G4560 custom build video series. This is the behind the scenes why vlog, my detailed explanation for all the choices and in-depth conversation on two cores versus four cores, alternative options you might consider, and my general thoughts on $500 gaming machines. Now, if you have not seen part one or you want a short version of this video, in the video description below will be the full playlist of this video series. Part one is much shorter. If you just want a summary of the parts, the prices, generally why I chose them, a couple of alternatives, and you want me to get to the point more quickly, go watch part one. This is gonna be a long video, so sit back, grab a cup of coffee or some popcorn or a snack and relax, because I am gonna talk for a while, but this is meant to be an in-depth video for somebody who really wants to get an idea of my thought process behind various choices and where I see the computer gaming business being in 2017. After this video is gonna be part three, the build, where I actually put all of these parts together. That's gonna to be a step-by-step -step build. Uh, you'll be able to follow along if you wanna build it yourself. After that is going to be Windows installation, Windows performance review, game performance reviews, and many more comparisons. This will be a staple throughout 2017 for me for upcoming comparisons to unreleased processors, such as the upcoming four core eight thread chips from AMD. So if you're still with me, awesome, welcome. And if you're not, well, then you didn't hear that anyway. Side note, I'm not gonna be putting a lot of words on the screen because this is a long video and it would take forever to edit if I did that. However, if any of you are interested in providing captions, either in English or another language, I do have my video set up to accept contributions. You can do so um, somewhere on the YouTube page below. You can submit captions where you can actually type up what I'm saying as words that will appear as I'm saying it, you submit them, I can see it, I'll approve it, and then I'll give you credit in the description below for doing so. So if perhaps English is not your first language and you wanna help out people in your country, I would certainly appreciate it if that's something that you would like to do. The first thing I wanna address is the elephant in the room two-core processor in 2017. Now, I don't have an objection to a two-core processor in general. If I just needed a computer for basic web browsing, watching videos, uh, editing some documents in Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, if I just needed a computer that was just gonna maybe do casual games, play League of Legends and Rocket League, this CPU is all you need. In fact, even this graphics card is overkill. You don't even have to spend all this money. So. If that's your goal, a two core CPU is fine. The only issue is if that's your goal, this is fine. This computer here is a Dell Optiplex mini tower that I bought off of eBay for about $130. Now I've done a video on $250 gaming machines. I will link that in the video description below. This is a six year old computer. It is an Intel i5-2400 processor four cores, four threads at 3.1 gigahertz. Now it has a little bit of a turbo speed above that, but count on 3.1 gigahertz, especially if you're using all four cores. This brand new seventh generation, that's second, so there's five generations of gap between them. Seventh generation processor is 3.5 gigahertz, but it's two cores, four threads. So it presents itself as a four core processor to Windows, but it's not. There's actually only two math execution units. It can really only do two things at once. What the extra threads do, what the hyper threading does, is it allows the processor to accept four instructions from Windows at one time. Maybe your game, maybe your multitasking. It lets Windows send four tasks to the processor, and then the processor figures out the best order in which to execute them. It often can provide a speed bump over a true two core processor. If this was just a two core, two thread processor, it would be a bit slower. Hyper threading is no substitute for real cores. The i5 processor in this six year old machine has four real instruction units. It can actually execute four things at once. This can actually only do two things at once. Do you wanna play Battlefield 1, Grand Theft Auto 5? Do you wanna play modern games that really do use four, four cores? they will run smoother on this at 3.1 gigahertz than they will on this at 3.5. Or at least I believe they will anyway. I will test this. In the game performance videos I'll be doing on this, not only will I compare it to modern quad-core processors, I will compare it to a six-year-old quad-core processor to answer the question, 
Do you buy this and turn it into a budget gaming machine, or do you build a new one? Now, this may not be an option where you live. Maybe you're not in the United States, maybe the prices have gone up, or the week you wanted to go look, there weren't too many for sale. I will say that over the past six months, they have been consistently available on eBay, in the United States at least. That is because the Optiplex line from Dell is a business machine. These are all coming off lease. Businesses had these leased for between three to five years. These were all in offices. And they're coming off of lease and they're available by the thousands. Well, the leasing companies don't want them, so they sell them to refurbishers who take them, clean them up, make sure they power on and work, and they sell them either stripped with no hard drive or they put a hard drive in, they put some RAM in, and they sell them on eBay for between $100 to $150, depending upon what's included with a RAM drive, etc. Now, it is true that this may be six years old. However, the reality is Intel processors are only getting a 5 to 10% improvement in instructions per clock cycle per generation. Now, that adds up over time. In the six generations between second gen and seventh gen, there's probably a 35 to 40% improvement in instructions per clock cycle. This is 3.5 gigahertz, that's 3.1, and this does more per gigahertz than this does. If you're playing a game that only uses two threads, this Pentium G4560 is undeniably faster than this CPU will be. If you want to play an online MMO such as Star Wars The Old Republic, which I have a lot of experience with, it only uses two threads. Star Wars The Old Republic will be dramatically and noticeably faster on this CPU than it will be on this computer. I can speak from personal experience in that regard. I've tried playing it on these and it's not that great of an experience. That being said, do you want to play Battlefield 1 and Grand Theft Auto 5? They run better on this. They really do use four cores. And there's just no substitute for having four real cores. It also has more level three cache and some other features in it that the Pentium budget CPUs don't have. But wait, you say, you want four real processing cores and a modern architecture. I've got two options for you. Number one, this is a $500 build. The CPU is $65 of that. The modern version of the i5-2400 is the i5-7400. It runs at up to 3.5 gigahertz, just like this chip does, and it's a seventh generation chip exactly as efficient as this, but with four real processing cores. $180. It's $115 more than this chip. So this $500 build becomes $615 with the i5. That i5 chip will work just fine on this motherboard. You don't have to change it. It'll work great with this graphics card. No need to change it. It'll work great with the power supply. Change nothing. It comes with the Intel stock heat sink and fan. It's plenty for a three and a half gigahertz chip. So for $115 more or roughly 20% of the price, because going from 500 to 615 is roughly, I know it's not exact, but roughly 20% more money doubles your core count. It goes you from two cores to four. And then you really can run Battlefield 1, Grand Theft Auto 5, The Witcher 3, and others well on this machine. That's your first choice. Your second choice is this computer. This is $450. Acer Aspire T desktop computer. I have previously reviewed this. Link to that in the video description below. This is an updated version of that computer. The one I reviewed before was an i5-6400. They now have an i5-7400. By that version, it's faster. So, $450 and you get a complete, brand new, under warranty, ready to run computer. Eight gigs of RAM, two terabyte hard drive, 300 watt power supply, and the i5-7400, and you don't have to build it. It comes with basically everything you see here, a little bit less power supply, a little bit smaller case, but essentially it's largely the same computer, no graphics card. It's just using the integrated graphics. Now, the integrated graphics on the i5-7400 is the HD630, and that will run Rocket League, Dota 2, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, League of Legends, Minecraft, perfectly. But if you wanna play Battlefield 1 and Grand Theft Auto 5, you need to add a graphics card. Unfortunately, you cannot add this card. And it's not because of the power supply. This is that graphics card. This is the RX 470 four gigabyte ASUS Republic of Gamer Strix graphics card. It does not physically fit 
into that machine. It's too long. It's simply too big. I have multiple RX 470s. I have the uh, MSI Armor. I have an XFX card. None of them fit into either of these pre-builds. Even if you replace the power supply, the drive cages are in the way. The cables are in the way. The cases are just too small for this card. I have not yet found a 470 that fits. Now, price to performance, the 470 cannot be beaten. For $150, this is an incredible value for the money. However, if you want to skip building and you don't want to go old, I have another option for you, and that is this. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 1060 3 gigabyte super clock card, $200. It is $50 more expensive than this card. It's 10% faster, give or take. It's 25% more money for 10% more speed. From a dollars to performance perspective, the 1060 is not as good of a deal as the 470. However, notice anything? Yeah, this fits perfectly in both of these machines. In addition, it runs perfectly in both of those machines because I've had it in both of these machines. If you've seen any of my generational comparisons, this is actually the computer that I tested when I did Grand Theft Auto V GTX 1060 i5-2400 versus i5-6500. This is the card. Uh, well, actually, I think I'm going to use the 6 gig version, but I have both the 3 and the 6 gig version. This is the machine I used. It runs fine in here. I did not replace the power supply. I used one of these, and this comes with the card. This comes with the EVGA card. Now, it does not come with all 1060s, but it does come with the EVGA cards. This is a 2 Molex connector to one 6-pin PCI Express power connector. This plugs into the top of the card and then plugs into the power supply. Furthermore, not all of the i5-2400s are going to handle it, but I can promise you that the Acer Aspire T will. The Acer Aspire T comes with a 300 watt power supply and it comes with the two Molex connectors inside you will need to use this. I have actually had this exact card in that exact machine for more than two months. This is actually a spare. Inside this right now is another one of these plugged into the two Molexes. I pulled this out to make this video. This was in there an hour ago. It runs perfectly. You do not have to replace the power supply in the Acer Aspire T in order to make a GTX 1060 work. It's plenty. The 300 watts this comes with is all you need. Yes, some people will say, but I want to be sure, so I'll go out and spend $35 on a power supply and put it in there. You can. Don't waste your money. Use this. I promise you, I've used it for months and months and months. It works just fine. My kids game with this thing. It, it really it doesn't pull that much power. Now, some of the pre-built i5-2400s come with 260 to 280 watt power supplies. Some don't. I have an HP that came with a 265 watt power supply, but I have a Lenovo computer that came with, I think it was 180 watt power supply. That had to be changed. So if you follow my link in the video description below to eBay to take a look at the i5-2400 machines, or you follow the link in the video description below to my video on how to make a 250 to 300 hour gaming computer, some of them will need a power supply change and some won't. And some you won't know until you buy the thing. Now, that's a $35 power supply and that will fit into almost any mini tower pre-built that you buy. Not all, but most. Some Lenovo's and some older compact machines don't have standard motherboard power connectors and require an adapter cable. You can get those off of eBay or Amazon for $10, but they do require an adapter. Dell's and HP's are generally standard 24-pin ATX power connectors. If you can, the Dell Optiplexes are wonderful. I have had excellent luck with these machines. I own three, four of them now. Now, I use most of these for my office. Uh, not all these are gaming machines. I love them because for general office tasks, for $120, $130, it's all we really need in order to run office, web browsing, etc. It's a great value for the money. Now, this does bring up a worthwhile point. $450, let's say you want a new one, 
$450 plus $200 for this card is $650. Now you don't need anything else. Two terabyte drive, eight gigs of RAM, you can upgrade to 16 if you want, you know, cost you $50 or so, but you're looking at $650 for this combination. You can build this machine for $615 with the i5-7400. And many of you may immediately say, wait a minute, I get a little bit bigger case, I get a more powerful power supply, I get to custom build it, and it's less expensive. Maybe. This graphics card is in fact about 10% slower, so you are getting a little bit less graphics performance, but it's minor. I would not lose any sleep over that. That computer comes with keyboard, mouse, Wi-Fi, a DVD drive, a legal copy of Windows, and it's built and you don't have to mess with it. This you have to build, and my $615 price does not include Windows, Wi-Fi adapter, DVD drive, keyboard, mouse, and you have to build it and provide support. If you built this and have a problem with it, you have no one to complain to. If you order this off of Amazon, plug it in, turn it on, and it doesn't work, Amazon will have another one on your doorstep in 24 to 48 hours. It's not your problem, and they'll pay return shipping, and you don't have to care. Now, if you don't live in the United States, and these aren't options for you, I understand. One of the reasons I'm doing this video is because some people either want to build their own machine, or they plan to upgrade in the future, or they just don't want one of these, and that's fine. I understand that. I, my personal computer is always going to be a custom-built machine. You know, I have several of these for work and for home. Um, two of my kids have these because they're simple and cheap and they're kids and they don't care. But, you know, when they get older, they'll custom build, I'm sure. But for the money, these are very compelling arguments if you aren't married to building a machine. If you consider this a chore, go this route. If you consider this fun, go ahead and build, by all means. You learn more about your computer. Uh, you can make it a fun Saturday in an activity. It really doesn't take that long. Even if you've never built a computer before, two, maybe four hours if you really take your time and look up everything slowly. Now, when I do the build video of this, I am going to go slow enough so that you can follow along yourself. Some of my build videos have been faster than others. I've done some very long ones. I've done some shorter ones. This one I'm going to do so you can follow along. It'll probably be 45 minutes to an hour long, but the goal is you prop up your phone or your iPad or put it on your television and you can watch the build while you're building and follow along and go, oh, that's how I put that together. That's what I do. Okay, fair enough. One final point about playing games and this build specifically. This is the Pentium G4560 CPU for $65. Now, if you buy this and you want to play games, I highly recommend you add a graphics card. Now, if you want to play more relaxed, casual games and you want to save some money, you can certainly go with an RX 460, but the price between the 460 and the 470 are relatively close. And I do want to make an important point. The 470 is, in general, double the performance of the 460. Not just 50% faster, not just a bit, it's double. It's two 460s. The RX 460 four gigabyte graphics card is generally gonna run you about $100. This is gonna run you 150. So it's 50% more expensive for 100% more performance. That's a deal. But wait, you say, you don't want to play Battlefield 1. You're going to go ahead and get the Pentium because you're, you don't want to play all the latest and greatest games. You want to maybe be a more casual player. Let me offer you an alternative. Delete the graphics card completely and spend a little bit more and get the Pentium G4600. It's $90. So you're going to spend $25 more on the CPU, but you double the integrated graphics performance. The Pentium G4560, the CPU right here for $65, has the Intel HD 610 graphics. The G4600 for $25 more has the HD 630. In short, the 630 is almost double the performance of the 610. If you're buying or if you're building this because you primarily want to play League of Legends, Dota 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rocket League, Minecraft, the HD 630 is all you need. The 610 is a little weak. Delete the graphics card, spend $25 more on your CPU, and get double the integrated graphics performance. 
I will do performance comparisons on the HD 610 versus 630. I'll use an i3 CPU to get a 630 because all the i3s have a 630 in them. I will downclock it to match the clock speed. Now, when you do spend the money, the extra $25, you also get an extra 100 megahertz of clock speed. It's 3.6 instead of 3.5. That is a trivial difference you will never, ever notice. Don't, don't make the upgrade for the extra 100 megahertz. Do it for the double integrated graphics performance. It's not a factor if you're going to install a graphics card. So if you build this and put a graphics card in, don't waste your money on the 4600. Just get the 4560. It's really all you need unless you want the better integrated graphics. One point I'd like to make about this motherboard. This is a great value for the money. For $65, this is a good B250 motherboard, but it's a very basic motherboard. If you think in the future, you may want to upgrade your CPU to an i5. Maybe you're building this because you're on a budget right now, but you think I'm going to save my money up in six months or a year. I want to buy an i5 and it gives me room to grow. Fair enough. Maybe you buy this RX 470 because you think I want to cross fire them in the future. The downside to the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 is you cannot SLI them. You can't put two. You can buy one of this today, wait a year, and buy another one when they're discounted or buy a used one on eBay in a year when people are selling them and upgrading to the latest and greatest. And you can put two of these in here and run them in what's called Crossfire. Now, it does not double your graphics performance, but in some games, not all, but in some games, you can get a 70 to 80% boost in your performance by installing a second one of these cards. You can't in this motherboard because it doesn't have two graphics card slots. My suggestion would be to spend $25 to $35 more and buy a larger ATX motherboard that has two graphics card slots. A good example of this, MSI has a board for $90, and I'll link this in the uh, alternative sections down below, and ASUS has a motherboard for $100. They're B250 boards, but they're larger. They have four RAM slots. This has two, giving you room to upgrade your RAM, and they have two graphics card slots and support crossfire with two of these cards. So if you think you might want to upgrade in the future, spend $25 to $35 more on your motherboard, buy one of these cards because you can add another one in the future using that motherboard. You can then upgrade to an i5 if you have the money in the future as well. Please note, if you think you're going to do this, this kicks up another upgrade, power supply. This power supply is absolutely all you need to run what you see here. It's actually plenty for the i5 as well. I would not use this power supply if you plan on adding two of these graphics cards. It's not really enough. This is $35. I would spend $15 more and buy the 600 watt bronze from EVGA. A 500 would actually do the job, but for 5 or $10 more, I would get the 600 and remove all doubt and concerns because you don't know what you'll do in the future. If you think you might go to two graphics cards, if you're buying a better motherboard, spend 5 or $10 more, get the 600 watt bronze from EVGA. The reason for this is because you're gonna need a lot more power. These cards draw 150 watts each. 150 plus 150 is 300. If you upgrade to an i5 and you have a bigger motherboard and you wanna add more RAM and you want to add more storage, you can see where this is going. 500 is enough, so long as you only ever put RX 470s in there. What if the RX 490 or whatever comes out later in the year and you upgrade to it and it's a 250 watt card because you've got the money and you put an i5 in? Spend $10 more now and you don't ever have to worry about it. Power supplies can easily last you 10 years. So by buying a better one now, the case and the power supply can outlast all of this for many, many years of upgrades. So there's basically two approaches. Build it as it sits and leave it as it sits. Plan on this being all it ever is with maybe the change of this to an i5 or spend $25 to $35 more on the motherboard and $15 more on the power supply. So for another $50, you leave yourself room to either add a second one of these or upgrade to a super powerful card and a faster CPU and whatever else you want to put into the system. 
So this has been my detailed behind the scenes thinking on all of these parts and options, the pre-built, the older system from eBay, and then what you might do to customize this system. I hope this has been helpful for you in thinking about what your various choices are. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe, hit that big huge button below this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Questions and comments go in the comment section below. And as always, check out my video description. This will have a lot of links down there. A link to my budget deal on eBay for a older i5 based system will be down there. A link to my review series on this Acer Aspire T computer, which is a great value for the money. A link to the full video series on this $500 build will be down there. And links to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay for everything I've discussed on there on here will be down there as well. If you found this video helpful and useful to you in any way, please go down to the video description and use those. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.